Hey everyone, this is Motaf, uh, I'm here with Darkstream217, and today we're going to do a response to Teen Chibi's response to our video. And no, it's not going to be a commentary. It's going to be me and Darkstream talking about his points half and half, like some sort of crazy mixed up Starbucks drink. So here we go! His first claim was that anime is thriving, but it's not thriving. In fact, sales are down 8% from last year. When you look at the first half of last year and the first half of this year, things are worse for anime. And then he moved on to say that uh, most of everything in the 90s was a toy commercial. Now, this offended me, and... Um, He's right to a sense with things like Bandai. Now, they made toys and were like, put this in your anime. But you can't tell me that most of everything they put in anime was, you know, a toy commercial. I, I think that's really fucked up. And he really didn't prove that at all. And then he moved on to say 80% of everything in the 90s was shit. And he said he got this from some sort of list. But he never told us what list. There was no sources cited at all and then he moved on to say 90 percent of all anime today sucks according to some law he listed i'm not really sure what the name was but which is it 80 or 90 percent technically since he said 80 percent of all 80 uh 90s anime sucked and then 90 percent of everything today sucks it's kind of like he's admitting that our point is true and the 90s is better that may seem very nitpicky but that's just how it came off to me What's up, everyone? Darkscream217 here. I'm sorry, I didn't say anything earlier for the past minute or so. Um, these points were just all strictly something Multifire wanted to say. Personally, Crazy Kobun, as he's Chin Chibi is referred to now, I actually did like his response. And even though he was being a little bit inconsistent, I was glad that he pointed out that, you know, anime shouldn't really have a time card added to the quality. And that all anime has been consistent, it's been produced consistently the same. However, there are some things that I really disagree with or something he really didn't understand. For one thing, he thinks that I'm one of those new people, one of those anime reviewers or one of those anime fans basically saying that old is bad, old is great, the new sucks. Now, Amazingly, I don't want to become that person. I, I do believe I do want to like anime, uh, do, but not just like it, but fucking watch it. And he says, "Yeah, it's true. I haven't been taking the time to sit down and watch, but basically because I really don't have that much time to work on. What do you? Uh, never mind. I don't really have that much time to work, but uh, to watch the anime that he listed, which we'll cover on later in this video." But, I do see some flaws, and personally, I don't think fan service is a flaw, unless if it's how it's utilized, as well as some other things. I mean, if, if, if there's an anime that's like made in the 90s, I'm not going to call it perfect. I may like it, but I will still point out the flaws, and I might give it a low recommendation score. So he thinks that we put on nostalgia goggles, when in fact I, I want to actually just take them off. If, the reason why, I, it's kind of the reason why I do reviews, because I want to finish watching anime. Because it's not just the new anime I'm not watching, Crazy Kobun. I still have a huge backlist of shows I have yet to see. I haven't finished watching Devil Hunter Yoko. I haven't finished watching Oh My Goddess. Uh, I still haven't finished watching Burn Up Excess. Azamaga Dayo, Angelic Layer, uh, those who hunt elves, I'm just looking around my room, it, it, the, it just, it's, it, there's, there's a huge list, it's not just the newer anime I'm not watching, it's also the older stuff that I own on DVD, just so you know. I also want to point out that whenever I review or critique an anime, or almost any show really, um, I never really judge on the plot alone. Um, unless of course it's a badly written plot as well as badly everything else Garcy Swing here's the thing sometimes the storyline isn't the only thing that matters or isn't even the biggest thing that matters you know Akira is its plot a bit of a mess yeah is it shit 
No. It still has good animation. I do like most of the characters. You know, sometimes the characters could be the main focus, like the slice of life genre that you like to point out. There's no fucking story in there. Hell, that's a, much less of a plot. So what can you judge the show on? Well, you could judge on its characters and who they are, and you can also judge it on, well, is it funny since most slice of life shows are comedies? He also mentioned that he's seen slice of life shows with better plot lines than Akira. Now, this is very <laughs> extreme. Like, I don't understand what slice of life shows had a better plot than Akira. In fact, I don't know if slice of life shows with coherent plots other than, oh, we're all best friends, yay, is like all you really get from the slice of life genre. And that's the current trend, like mentioned, slice of life. But it's horrible. In science fiction back in the 90s, even though some shallow shows were in the 90s, a shallow science fiction show in the 90s is still more complex than a complex slice of life show, or what could be a complex slice of life show, I, I guess. All right, so I will give them that the slice of life genre seems to be dying uh, as a dying trend. I don't know what the trend is going to be after that. But um, he also mentions that in the late 80s, uh, we had the science fiction trend with some quote-unquote generic sci-fi shows like Dirty Pair, even though personally I think the show is really, really good, really fun too. And in the 90s, there was also Magical Girls and and Mechas and, uh, God, what was the other thing I mentioned? Fantasy shows as well. Maybe that's my problem. Maybe I just prefer the, the, that kind of, tr those trends that were given to me as opposed to the trends they're using now, because even the most generic of shows I might find just a little bit more interesting and even memorable. Uh, bad anime can be memorable too. <laughs> just throwing yeah. it out there, man. Also, he asked me if I've been watching a series of anime. He he, he references them left and right, but I'm just going to make a quick uh, list here. Katana Nagari. Katana Nagari. God, it's hard to pronounce that name. Katana Katana Gatari. I only saw one episode of it. I actually did like it. If I do have the time, I will continue watching it. Trapeze. Never even heard of it. Bakamana Gatari. I've seen two episodes of it. I'm going to be honest with you. Bored me to tears. That show was way too dialogue heavy for me. Sayonara Zetsubo Sensei. I only saw half an episode, but it's not because of the show's fault. The fan subs were just being fucking annoying uh, when I was trying to watch it. Uh, Madoka Magica. Only show I've seen start to finish in 2011, and I actually do love it. Penny and Stocking. Seen it. Loved it. it turns out I actually like that anime more than Random DC does. And as for Pretty Cure, I don't know which one he mentioned, but I'm going to just paint the whole franchise. Never seen any of the Pretty Cure shows. And I only saw one episode of Tiger and Bunny. I might actually continue watching it. And aren't those shows like spread out? Oh, oh the I years? also have to mention these. He does mention that 2011 was a thriving year, but some of the shows that he listed came out earlier. That's it. Okay, now move on to the next part. All right, um, you get on us briefly for terminology and bash on us for using words like anything and all and those types of things, but you used words like most and made up statistics like 80% and 90%, so I was kind of annoyed that you got on us for terminology. You also um, kind of harped on us for watching shitty shows like R15, but we only saw three episodes of R15, and that's only because we wanted to judge it, because we had this three-episode rule back then. And I only watch Naruto Shippuden, even though that's a bad show, but only has a follow-up to Naruto, so I can continue reviewing the series. So I guess that cat's out of the bag, but those are the only two bad shows I can think of that I've been watching, and i no longer watching R15. Yeah, uh, actually, R15, I went in there with the impression that it might be a good anime because the premise to me was actually kind of interesting, but um, I was heavily disappointed, and I'll just leave it at that. I'm not even going to explain my reasons why, because I won't have enough time to do so in this video. You also mentioned, Crazy Coben, that not all anime needs a moral. And while this is true, like, you can have anime without morals, but sometimes you need that deeper message. Sometimes I need to think, I need uh, a deeper philosophy. 
I need to be shown something because that's kind of like why I like to observe in art. Sometimes I like to get lost in thought, and anime today doesn't do that. What we have right now is a lot of slice of life anime that really doesn't show us anything it doesn't teach us anything and when i i like to be absorbed in thought sometimes and have debates with my friends and move into an artistic direction now we have to go back to the 90s character designs and uh, and while we do while we can just agree to disagree here and while you did mention that the Saber Marionette J art style, which is very similar to Slayer's as well, and probably some, several other shows I can't really list off the top of my head. Uh, not every anime in the 90s looked like that, and I know you listed off a few, but it looked like you didn't list enough, because I agree on the same... When you said that most anime today have a wide variety in art designs too, the 90s also still had some wide variety in art designs. I'm going to list off my thing now. Because even though Sabian Sab and Marionette J had its own little art design, it still looked very different from Tenchi Muyo, which also looked different from Street Fighter II, the animated movie, which also looked different from Ghost in Shell, which also looked different from Cardcaptor Sakura, which also looked different from Excel Saga, even though that's a late example, which also looked different from Trigun. And yes, they also had their varieties of art designs. I'm and the reason why some of them might be very similar to each other is probably because the same studios have been working on them. I mean, to me, uh, anime from the animation studio Bones, a lot of them look very similar to each other. The only one that I thought that had a really standout animation style from that studio was uh, Soul Eater. You brought up CG uh, later on and how some people don't like CG. Me and Darkstream aren't like that. We don't mind CG in our anime. And then you brought up how Evangelion wasn't exactly animated, and you said it like that was kind of a negative aspect. And I talked, I replied to the Joseph show about this, actually. I have a repost of an early video I did when I first entered the community on my channel, if people are interested, called In Defense of Evangelion. So you can see amateur multi-far at work. But here's my basic point here. That show is really dark and it just talks about how shitty life is, basically. And it doesn't need beautiful art, it doesn't need beautiful animation, because that's not the focus. The focus is the story and the philosophy. One final thing that you mentioned was that, back in the day, um, anim uh, only the decent to really good shows would get licensed and released here. And... That part I kind of disagree with because there have been some bad anime that have been released back in the day, like Mad Bull 34. And I do agree that there are some really bad garbage 90s anime back there, like I said earlier. In fact, another reviewer I watched that I neglect to mention was um, uh, Bennett the Sage's Anime Abandoned video. He's like the only guy I watch on that guy with the glasses nowadays because he basically just covers anime both good and bad in that time period although I disagree with Ninja Scroll but he points out some bad shows that were like that were made back in the day but some of them I think were licensed a little later so yeah there have been some bad anime. and by the way Americanized anime I mean come on Sailor Moon like the, the I, I think the uh, West the uh, Western ver So we're just going to conclude this video by saying Crazy Kobun's video response was actually really good and very well thought out, even though there are things we will butt heads on. But I don't care. I thought that was a pretty. Si I thought he handled himself pretty well, and I still encourage people to check out his video if you want to stand on the uh, side that's opposite of our opinion. You can just side with him, and I wouldn't mind either way. I agree. Yeah. So, like I said, we had some disagreements. We, honestly, personally, if you want, to th uh, I, I'm not gonna uh, for anime in 2011. Whether it was a good year or not, I'm gonna have to wait till 2012 to find some pinpoint statistics rather than trying to find it out now. But that's just me. Um, so I really hope you enjoyed this video, Crazy Kobu. And I did enjoy your video response, and hopefully, maybe we can have discussions like this again in the future through these video responses. This this actually seems kind of fun. Yeah. All right. This is Darkscream217 signing out. And this is Multifire, and I'll see you in future videos. All right. Take care.